Today's movie starts with a visual of No Man's Land, a trench constructed between France and Germany during World War I. On Saturday 6th of January 1917, five condemned soldiers were escorted to Bouchevena at the front in Somme. The soldiers are now prisoners, and the first prisoner, who was once cheerful and adventurous, wore the tag number 2124. The man was drafted from the Sin area, and at the time of his arrest, he was wearing boots taken from a dead German. Before he was given the tag 2124, the man was called Basar. Baysock was in love with a beautiful redhead woman called Veronique, and before the war, Baysock was a carpenter. During the war, while he slept on the bottom bunk, he accidentally shot himself while chasing rats with a gun. He was court-martialed for self-mutilation and sentenced to death. The second prisoner, tagged with the number 4077, also arrived from an area near Sin, and he was a welder for the state railway, and his name was Francis. He tried to preach to his fellow soldiers that the poor built cannons for their own destruction, but it was the rich who sold them, but nobody listened. In one of the battles inside the trenches, Francis came face to face with a boy fighting for the Germans. Even though Francis was reluctant to kill him, one of the comrades stabbed the German boy to death. That night, during another battle, Francis burned his hand on purpose on a hot muzzle. The third soldier, who was tagged 1818, was the bravest of them all. He had once killed an officer who used to kick the bodies of the dead, but no one ever found out. Later, he shot his own hand with a rifle, and before the war, 1818 was called Benoit, and he used to be a farmer. Soldier 7328 was the fourth soldier, and his name was Angel, and he'd been recruited from Corsica. He was a liar, a cheat, and a troublemaker, and before the war, he had a prostitute that worked for him called Tina. Angel was sentenced to five years for a crime he had committed, and then later forced to enlist. Fearing the war, he and his friend tried to shoot each other's hand, but Angel ended up accidentally shooting his friend in the head while his friend shot Angel's fingers off. The fifth soldier, Manich, was just five months shy of 20, and he was scared of everything after entering the war, and he'd experienced a lot of trauma and his friend exploding right in front of him, and that night, he lit a cigarette and put his hands out to the trenches so he could be shot. Manich had a lover called Matilda, who patiently awaited his return. In 1920, Matilda received a letter from a nun, and a patient at Wren Hospital wanted to see her. He had met Manich at the front of Somme, and he told her that he was instructed to take five condemned soldiers to the front line trenches, and Manich was one of them. At the trench, after feeding the men their last meal, they cut the barbed wires, equipped the five against the cold, and sent them over the wall. In the morning, they all called their names and they all answered except Benoit. He told Mathilde that he returned to make his report and was transferred to another location. A few months later, he was injured and was sent to the hospital in the same ambulance as a corporate from Bingo Trench. He had told him that all the men that were sent out were killed, and the man gives Mathilde a box full of the prisoner's belongings, and with that, she leaves. Mathilde was born in 1900. She lost her parents in a bus accident just three years later, and she was raised by her uncle and her aunt, Silva and Benedict. When she turned five, she was diagnosed with polio and was bedridden for months. She is now 20 years old, and Mathilde decides to go to Paris and find out more about her fiancé. Once there, she asks about all the prisoners, and she teams up with a private investigator called Pierre, who helps her track down the convict's loved ones. Mathilde and Rouvier go to the archives accompanied by a police official. As the police and Rouvier look for information, Mathilde gets on a wheelchair that she was pretending to need and starts her own search. And by the time the two men come back, she was sitting in her chair like nothing happened and the men inform her that they couldn't find anything. On the train, Mathilde looks through the papers that she'd stolen, and she finds her fiancé's sentencing for self-mutilation. Back at her house, Mathilde is sad about everything she'd learned, and she starts drinking with her uncle. Mathilde remembers Manage taking her up to the church roof, carrying her on his back, and carving MMM, which stands for Manch Mary's Mathilde, on one of the church bells. The next day, Mathilde receives a message from Veronique, the first soldier's lover she had tried to find in Paris. In the Letter, Veronique writes that Louis, the bartender Mathilde has spoken with, had told her that she came looking for her regarding her lost lover. She tells her about an encounter that she had which left her quite shaken. One day, she was feeling down so she headed to her lover's workshop, and at the door, she meets a woman dressed up as a nun who asks her about Basak. Veronique tells her that he died at the front of Sam, and this woman, the nun, 
threatens Veronique and asks her about the comrade who was hiding with Basok. And she wanted to know if this comrade was Angel. Over the next couple of days, Mathilde started receiving different letters from different people all over from France about her investigation. Pierre comes to visit Mathilde and informs her about his struggles to find Tina, and he brings her a picture of a man called Benjamin, who had won the competition for carpentry for six consecutive years. He was Basok's best friend, but they quarreled because of a woman called Elodie until they met at the trenches. Mathilde tries to figure out why Tina thinks that Basok is alive, and she realizes that it was because of the boots that he's stolen from the Germans. Tina had heard that somebody had survived wearing stolen German boots, and Mathilde hopes that Basok had gotten Manage out as well. Mathilde returns to Paris and heads to a large marketplace looking for a woman called Elodie. Mathilde shows her a picture, but Elodie is evasive and tells her that she doesn't know the man in the picture. Mathilde asks the woman if the two were fighting over her, and Elodie tells Mathilde that she can't explain it to her and to leave her her address so she can write it to her via letters. A day after Mathilde returns home, she receives the expected letter from Elodie. And Elodie begins by telling her about her husband Benjamin, a man who was unable to have his own children and married a woman who had four kids. She dies from TB, and Benjamin meets Elodie who had a child of her own. They soon marry and have a great life together until Benjamin is called to war. When he returns, he was traumatized by the war and was a completely different person. One day, Benjamin tells her that they need to have a sixth child so that he doesn't have to go back to war as it's a rule of the country. He asks her to sleep with his friend Basok so she can get pregnant, but she refuses because she doesn't want to break her vows. But after a lot of nagging, she finally agrees and sleeps with Basok, but as time progressed, they develop feelings toward each other, which drives her husband crazy and she informs her that Basok was dead and her husband was killed in a hospital bombing. Mathilde receives a call from Pierre who tells her that he found out where her fiancé and the rest of the prisoners were buried. This news devastates Mathilde and she goes to visit the cemetery where her fiancé was buried. On September 15, 1920, the man Mathilde had been looking for called Pooh comes to her house after seeing the ad that her PI had posted all over the city. While having dinner, Pooh tells Mathilde that the last time he saw her fiancé was when he was carving MMM on a tree in the middle of no man's land and was gunned down by a German plane. Pooh tells his story all night until Mathilde is too tired to hear anymore and goes to sleep. The next day, Mathilde shows him all the items she'd retrieved that belonged to the five condemned men, and Pooh tells her that before the men were led outside the wall, Benjamin had exchanged his boots with Basok so that the Germans don't know that he's tripped one of their own. And he tells her that this man was seen traveling with a young man. Suddenly, Mathilde realizes that she's been following the wrong clue. It wasn't Basok that survived, but Benjamin. Upset, Mathilde slaps Pooh and runs down to her room, and she was hoping that her fiancé was alive, but now she might have proved that he was, but she thinks that he'd abandoned her. Mathilde goes to visit the Bingo trench site, now covered with grass, and all the trenches filled in. On their way back, Mathilde, her uncle, and Pooh sit in a cafe and discuss what could have happened to her fiancé, when suddenly, Mathilde sees a woman writing MMM on the cafe's board as a secret communication. Mathilde follows the woman to the bathroom and finds out that she was German. The woman tells her the story her brother had told her about the boy that was carving those letters on the trees, and she also tells her that a large man had survived the bombings, which turns out to be Francis. Back at her seat, her uncle shows her a newspaper that contained information about Tina, and it said that she's been arrested for killing officers. Mathilde then travels by train with Pierre to speak with Tina, and in her cell, Tina tells Mathilde that she regrets nothing. Tina tells her that all five men were pardoned by the president, but the general kept the paper. She assures Mathilde not to worry because she's taking care of him. Tina explains that she hunted down everyone that hurt her man Angel, and later Tina was also executed. As she travels back to her city, Mathilde connects the dots realizing that the large man who was traveling with the young man was Francis. She finds Francis living in the countryside with his family, hidden from the police so that they don't arrest him for fleeing. He tells her that he's seen the ads and wanted to kill her because she was arousing suspicion but couldn't do it. Mathilde asks Francis if her fiancé was alive, and he tells her that the last time he saw him, he wasn't really doing well. He tells her that he'd seen her fiancé get shot, but he was hit in the head with a piece of metal right after. And when the bombing started, he hid, and after the fight was over, he dressed in clothes of one of the soldiers he found and headed out. He tells her that he found her fiancé alive by the same tree that he was carving at, and he'd carried him on his shoulders and got him out of the trenches, but they were separated after they'd taken him to the hospital. And he tells her that her fiancé changed his name, and he is now called Jean. 
And the next day, Mathilde receives a letter from Pierre informing her that her fiancé was alive, but he's lost all his memory. Mathilde heads to his home to meet him, and she finds him sitting in a garden working on his craft. And the movie ends as Mathilde leans back into her chair and folds her hand on her lap and looks at him. And this is how today's movie wraps up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and most of all, subscribe to my channel. I love you guys so much, and I promise to see you on my next recap. Bye.